Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper. I am doing a comprehensive review series of Optimus Prime figures called That's Just Prime. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine video, unboxings, vlogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click subscribe and hit that bell icon icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. I upload two videos a week, sometimes more. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Origami Ninja, Raphael, Leonardo, Donatello and Michelangelo figures and I love these toys so the new rise of the tmnt cartoon is currently airing on nickelodeon it just recently came out as of the time of this recording and it's been a very polarizing show a lot of people have very mixed feelings over the animation style and the designs and the length of the episodes and and there, there's a lot to discuss about the show itself uh, I'm going to leave my opinions about the show for possibly another video. This is going to be strictly opinion based on the figures themselves. And I think these are very, very cool figures. I do like the design of the figures and I think the toys are very, very cool toys. If you remember when we had the live action Ninja Turtle movies that came out in recent years, I was very vocally not a fan of that design. I didn't like the way they looked in the movies and I didn't really care for the movies themselves, particularly the first one. The second one I enjoyed a little more. That first movie, I just really disliked the movie. But regardless of all of that, I still purchased the toys and I really, really liked the toys. It was really interesting how much I liked the toys versus how much I disliked the movie itself. So this is kind of the same here because I really enjoy these figures a lot. And uh, again, opinions on the show, I'm going to leave for another video and we'll talk about that later with my daughter. So let's get into these figures themselves one at a time. And we're going to start things off with Raphael since he is the leader of the group in this new show. Raphael here stands about five inches tall. So all these figures, they range between four and a half to five inches with Raphael being the tallest because he's the biggest here in the new show and Michelangelo being the shortest at four and a half and everyone else that uh, Leo Donnie and the Origami Ninja they're all about somewhere in, in, in the middle there so as you can see here Raph uh, is sporting the classic red colors for his bandanas and his uh, elbow pads and no knee pads this time around but he does have some thigh wraps there his belt is also red and you can just see that he is huge and a uh, very muscular looking figure um, not quite as big as they portray him on the show. On the show, they portray him a lot bigger than all the other uh, turtles. But there you go, just kind of looking around him. And uh, this time around, something that they've done differently with this new show is that every turtle is a different species of turtle. So, Raph here is a snapping turtle. Don't know if he's just a regular snapping turtle or an alligator snapping turtle. They haven't really addressed that. But based on the spikes on the shell, it looks like he's an alligator snapping turtle. Possibly. Although if that was the case, he should probably have a tail. Uh, he does have the bandana that wraps all the way around. Not quite sure how I feel about that. I, I really prefer the classic bandana look over the whole head covered look. Um, this time around, they did it with two of them. Donnie and Raph both have full head covers. And Leo and Mikey have the... Um, traditional style of eye bandanas so articulation wise he can uh, look side to side it looks like the head may possibly be on a ball joint but the up and down movement is severely limited pretty much near zero it just barely doesn't move so uh, but you do get nice side to side you've got a rotating uh, hinge at the shoulder so you can go in and out and you can go all the way around as well you do have a Another rotating hinge at the elbow, so you can uh, bend the elbows and you can also rotate at the elbow as well as having a wrist articulation. Nothing at the waist, the shell is just not going to allow for that. Another rotating hinge at the um, hips there, so forward, backward, and rotation as well. So you can kind of rotate the legs around. Uh, another uh, rotating hinge at the knee, so again, bend at the knee 90 and you can turn the knee. 
and then also you've got an up and down at the ankle as well as rotation so a lot of turning pin hinges on these figures which make them very poseable uh, and very nicely articulated very very nice now he does come with some accessories uh, we're going to start with these because these are going to be a repeat with every single one of the turtles all four of the turtles come with two throwing stars so you can put these guys in his hands and he's ready to just throw those at some enemies there you go so every turtle comes with two of these throwing stars now this time around Raph is not sporting his size his traditional size he instead has these tomfas so these can be clipped either on his belt right here you can just store those away right there and just kind of put them under his arm and then you can also have him hold it and because of the design of the tomfa you can actually have him hold him in all kinds of different poses so you can hold him like that you can hold them uh, this way or to the front or under the arm you can do all kinds of things with them very very cool so we just kind of see if we can give them a pose here with them underslung like that which is kind of the way i like to display him on my shelf is with the tonfas underslung like that pose him up get a nice shot of him right there so yep that's the way i like to display him on my shelf now another thing that they have on the show is they have these mystical weapons. They in the in the first episode, if you haven't seen it, spoilers ahead. In the first episode, they they have battles, or they have a battle with these two characters that actually end up destroying their weapons, and they follow them to this sort of underworld. And when they get down there, they find these mystical weapons. So they have the weapons that look, you know, just like normal weapons, but then they can power them up and they become like glowing weapons. So this time around, you've got these gauntlets and you can see it just kind of looks like his fists are just lit up and they're, they're actually holding Tomfa. So this is meant to simulate when the weapon powers up when he's using them on the show because not only do his weapons light up but his fists also kind of light up and they sort of generate this energy field around his fist um as he's using them so that's that's kind of what that would look like that's really really cool i really like the addition of these uh weapons right here so there's Raphael. And uh, real quick, just for comparison, here he is next to the original Raphael from the 1988 line and the battle shell uh, or storage shell Raphael from the 2012 series. Okay, next up is Leonardo this time around. Like I mentioned, Raph was the leader, so Leonardo is now known as the trickster and leonardo is a red ear slider so he's going to have those red marks right around the, his eyes right there and you can see them right under his bandana which i think is a really cool touch i've actually owned red ear sliders and yellow bellies and a couple of different turtles over the years so i'm, I'm familiar with some of these species and that's a really cool little detail that they added those right there so again uh just under five inches tall for leonardo here and a lot slimmer profile than he did from uh, Raphael but going all the way around you can see all the detail on him you can see the shell he's got a nice hard shell there and the belt going all the way around he does have the more traditional bandana going around the eyes there and he does seem to have a couple of pouches there on his belt and they all have this little emblem and I don't know if that's going to be a communicator later on or what that's going to be but it it does have every single one of them have like this little buckle thing with a turtle shell and a T on there so once again for articulation it's going to be the same so this time uh, the head is on a ball joint so it can look up and down and it can look side to side and again you've got all of those spinning pin hinges on the shoulder so in and out forward backward elbow so bend at the elbow and rotation you have a rotation at the wrist actually you do not have a rotation at the wrist you have a rotation right at the top of the gauntlet look at that so that one was different Again, uh, the spinning hinge at the hip, so forward, backwards, in and out, rotation, that kind of thing. A spinning hinge at the knee and a spinning hinge at the ankle, so very nicely posable. These guys have a lot of articulation. They're very posable and they're very animated looking, so they're very, very cool figures. They look really, really nice on the shelf. For accessories, Leonardo came with, of course, the two ninja stars that he can hold, so we'll give them those real quick. So we can kind of demonstrate him holding some ninja stars there and there unfortunately there's nowhere on the belt to clip them or anything like that that would have been cool to have like a couple of little pegs somewhere where you can peg these on that would have been cool but there you go 
there's uh, Leo getting ready to throw a, one of his ninja stars. So we'll set that aside. And Leo also came with this time around. He doesn't have katana swords. He has an Odachi sword. So he only has the one sword this time around. Now on the belt, there is a clip on the back right there. So you can clip the, uh, the sword right there to the back of the belt and he can holster it like that. Very traditional, even though it's just the one. And of course he can also hold it in his hand. Now these are very soft rubber and uh, mine came a little bent. I've been slowly working it over the last couple of days trying to get that to straighten out, but there it is. He also, before I show the next weapon, he also comes with a skateboard, which is really cool. Uh, these are done in translucent uh, plastic. So this one's translucent blue and it does have really nice rolling wheels with a peg on there. So you can take the turtle's feet. You can really take any turtle, but you can take Leo in this case and just kind of peg him onto the skateboard and just have him skating around, which is gonna come in really handy in the future when we get the turtle lair, because there are some ramps, uh, some skate ramps and some slides and shoots and all kinds of stuff. So I'm sure that these are gonna come into play. You'll be able to roll the turtles down the ramps and down the slides with these uh, skateboards and attack enemies. So that's gonna be very cool. And then finally, he also has his mystical weapon, which is again the sword, but this time around it's energized, so it's all lit up or glowy as they call it on the show. So there's Leah holding his mystical Odashi sword, all powered up and ready to cut down some baddies. There you go. Oh, come on. Stand up for the camera, buddy. There he is. And uh, real quick for comparison, here he is standing next to the original 1988 Leonardo and the battle shell or storage shell Leonardo from the 2012 Nick series. So moving on to Donatello, he is the tech whiz and he is a soft shell turtle. So again, they did a really good job of translating what kind of turtle the uh, each one of the uh, characters is supposed to be. So uh, this time around, Donnie is uh, kind of slim and he's probably the one that's got the most accessories. And this is probably one of my favorite ones. You can, if you go around and look at his back, you can see his shell and it's a very slim, very uh, small, very thin looking shell which is very correct for a soft shell turtle. That's, that's really kind of what they look like. So what Donnie has done is he's made himself, made himself this armored shell that he can wear like a backpack so that uh, he can avoid some harm. And that is really, really cool. I love that detail so very much. So again, Donnie, once again, he's just under five inches. He's about the same height as Leo and he sports all the same articulation that we saw before. So I'm not gonna go over that because I don't want it to go too long. He does have the belt with, again, that T in the little shell there and uh, nowhere to store the weapon on him, unfortunately. Uh, but he's very typically on the show, he's just carrying it around in his hands anyway. So now, like I said, uh, Donnie looks like he's got the most accessories. Uh, this is not a removal accessory. I, I wish it would have been because I think that would have been really cool. But he does have his goggles right above his head there. And as you can see, he does have the bandana that goes all the way over his head. So not the traditional just eye bandana there. So along with the shell, the armored shell that he came with, he also has, of course, the two ninja stars. So one of them doesn't want to come up. So there they are. And, and, and really, these are all two stars per. I'm not just holding the same two stars over and over. There you go. So every single one of them does come with, uh, where's the other two? There's another one there. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stars. I'm not just holding the same two stars over and over. So we'll set those aside. Uh, he's also got this little sort of a drone backpack thing. You do see this in the first episode of the show. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember if we've seen this in any other uh, episodes, but I'm sure it'll make some more appearances. It just kind of comes off the back of his shell and he actually flies around with it and April rides around with him. So uh, you can store this on his back. It does have two tabs right there and you saw there was two slots on that armored shell. So you can just clip that on right there and you can wear it. I mean, it's not very obtrusive. It's right there on his back and it actually looks kind of nice. I personally don't display it with him on his back, uh, but even if you did, it's, it's not gonna look terrible on him. It looks pretty cool. So I like that a lot. And then of course he's got his um, <laughs> removable shell one more time. We'll put that back on. We'll set that aside. And he comes with his traditional bow. Now this is, well, not traditional. This time around he's got a tech 
bow. So this thing uh, opens up. It does have a, a spike at the end here on the show uh, where he when he uses it, it does open up. It, it things come out of it like these two little engines come out on each end that uh, um, they turn it when the engines turn on it helps him spin it faster. Usually it doesn't go well when he tries it. Um, but there you go. He's the only one that did not that he chose not to take one of the mystical weapons when they were in the underground and rather chose to kept his technical bow or his tech bow so there's there's the bow that's what he looks like with it and again no nowhere to store it on him uh but again he also usually always has it in his hand that's pretty much what he looks like on the show most of the time so there's that now he, like i said he does spin it and when he spins they do that um that effect like it's spinning really really fast so that he does come with this uh glowing bow and it's it's got these effects so it kind of looks like he's spinning it really fast now it does kind of look like it's glowing so to me this kind of looks like it would be one of the mystical weapons so i don't know if at some point he's gonna go and get a mystical bow or if this is just what it's supposed to look like but that's pretty cool because it does kind of make it look like he's spinning it around and spinning it fast so there's that and again uh real quick just for comparison here he is standing next to the original 1988 Donatello and the storage shell Donatello from the 2012 series. So you can see what he looks like next to the old school and the, uh, well, I guess not the new school, the last school. <laughs> and moving on to Michelangelo. He is known as the wild card of the team. He is the youngest turtle and he's the more artistic and the one that's known to have the more colorful personality so he does graffiti the the layer and he also graffitis himself that's why he's got markings on his shell there and uh usually on the show like the back of his shell is also painted up and he just kind of paints himself up there uh mikey is the shortest of the group he is supposed to be a box turtle so box turtle is what you typically see people having at home uh, as pet turtles they're either red or slider yellow bellies or box turtles so very basic uh what you think of when you think of a turtle uh usually you're thinking of a box turtle that's that's a, it's a very very common turtle so just a regular yellow shell uh, uh on the front with a green shell on the back is kind of roundish and uh yeah very he he looks like a box turtle it's it's really incredible how these these very stylized animated figures actually manage to look like the turtle species they're supposed to be it's it, i find that very fascinating very fascinating and i find it very cool once again he's got his belt uh this time he's got he's got a different belt so it just kind of goes over the shoulders just sh slung around the shoulder uh with one underarm sling just to kind of keep everything in place rather than the traditional belt but he does have the traditional eye bandana there a uh, weird thing is that he's got the clip for his weapon into the front there instead of in the back and this time around he does not support the nunchucks again he had them in the first episode they were broken and then now he sports the kasari fundo now he does come with quite a bit of accessories as well so again we'll just just to start off so we can get them out of the way there's his two ninja stars uh so there's that uh he does come with the kasari fundo and i think that's what this is this is the one that he uses on the show the most so it's just kind of looks like uh, a half of a nunchuck i guess i i don't really know these weapons very well but it's just the nunchuck stick with the chain and then at the end he'd have a ball and when he he throws it it actually extends so it's kind of like a, a combination of the two weapons that he had back in the original 80s cartoon where originally he started with the nunchucks and then he moved on to that grappling hook um it's kind of to me looks like a combination of that because it kind of looks like i have a nunchuck again on the show when he throws it this extends he can wrap this ball around things and pull things with it or whatever and then of course it it also lights up so he doesn't have he didn't come with any weapons that are not lit up they're all translucent uh, mystical looking weapons so there's this one oh just to show the clip on the front of his belt there you can clip a weapon to the front of his belt but i think that looks really odd uh, i think that clip should have been around his back I, I i don't know that that really works very well there uh you can try to maybe wrap it around him like that i don't know i i, I don't really like the way that looks but uh it's there now you can you know of course give him his weapons one in each hand so you can see what these look like and like, here's the other one this i haven't seen on the show it looks very much like the other one except it's got a punching glove at the end so i don't know if maybe on the show he, once he starts using the the weapon more uh with the mystical powers he's going to be able to change the end of it uh maybe that's going to be a thing but even though he comes with two on the show he's only got the one but at least he does 
come with two so you can give them one for each hand if you want to do that there's that so that's pretty cool and then of course he also comes with uh this thing and if you remember my review from the michael bay live action movie turtles uh michelangelo also came with one of these and i also didn't know what it was called it's kind of like a nunchuck but it's got three sticks instead of two uh, i don't know i don't know what this is i don't know what it's called um it looks like if you don't know how to use this you're gonna hurt yourself uh, really bad with it <laughs> so there you go there's michelangelo holding that uh, as well he doesn't want to stand up so all right so uh real quick articulation again same articulation as everybody else so ball jointed uh head uh the shoulders he's articulated at the elbow the wrists hips uh, knees and ankles i'm not going to do the same articulation over and over for every turtle i'm just going to point out that it's there now he does come with two more accessories and again i said donnie has the most accessories i think mikey and donnie are tied for the most accessories and mikey might have him beat because mikey also comes with a skateboard of his own now where leo's looked like a more traditional skateboard this looks like a longboard uh my daughter recently went to college and when I go and visit her, I see a lot of kids riding around in longboards. Actually, my daughter's starting a longboard herself. So uh, I've, I've seen a lot of these lately. And uh, yeah, this looks like a longboard to me. And again, it's got the wheels on there. So it rolls really, really nicely. It's also got the peg. So one more time, we're going to be able to. I'm goofy footed. So I always post my skateboarding figures goofy footed. Actually, that's not goofy footed. <laughs> Let's do him goofy foot like me there this way there he is so now mikey's riding goofy foot just like i would <laughs> there is very cool i like that a lot and again this rolls really nicely so once we get that um once we get that turtle layer with those ramps and those shoots i imagine we're going to be doing a lot of damage to the enemies with these guys that's also very fun so and then one last thing that mikey comes with we'll have him hold his board just for the shot come on mikey hold your board very cool We'll turn him a little bit there he is he also comes with a sticker sheet and you can use this sticker sheet to decorate pretty much anything you want you can use this on the skateboard you can use it on mikey himself you can use these stickers on leo's skateboard uh, again when we get the lair we can maybe uh, uh, decorate the lair uh, with mikey graffiti uh, by using these stickers and maybe even the turtle truck as well once we get that so very very cool and then once again just for comparison here he is standing with the 1988 michelangelo as well as the storage shell michelangelo from the 2012 series and finally we move on to the origami ninja and i found this guy to be kind of the dark horse of these figures for me i find him very very intriguing and interesting now on the show we have not been given any backstory we we haven't been told how the turtles became the turtles or how they even know april we have not been introduced to the shirt to the shredder or to the foot in a way we have met two foot soldiers uh one is a foot brute and the other is a foot lieutenant uh we've met those two guys and they have those two characters have the ability to create origami enemies so they they steal what they do is they steal paper and then they're really good at origami and then mystifying that origami and making that origami come to life so when we see them in the episode they make these origami ninjas uh they just kind of fold them little origami ninjas and throw them at the turtles and the ninjas just kind of come to life and battle them but on the episode that we saw they look like paper figures where here the actual uh or rather they look like paper characters where the action figure here actually looks like a foot ninja to me uh when i saw this i'm like i gotta get him and this is probably going to be my army builder because i think this is what's going to become the foot ninjas or the foot soldiers if you will i think this is going to be them and and i really like this design for this figure a lot i actually enjoyed this very very much so again he measures at about five just under five inches so he's almost as tall as Raphael was if he was standing straight he'd probably be taller but he's very hunched over which is very reminiscent of the original uh robot foot soldiers if you remember them now the articulation is going to be different on this guy from the turtles he's going to have a little bit less articulation and he's going to be a little harder to pose so the head can rotate you can turn it side to side but because the 
neck is angled this is not on a ball joint it's just a spin right there and because the neck is angled he can't really look side to side unless you're trying to make him look like he's tilting his head so there's that he does have a spinning joint at the shoulder so in and out forward and backwards spinning joint at the elbow one more time so that he can bend and turn his elbow and he does have articulation just above the wrist there uh, spinning spinning joints one more time at the hips so forward and backwards and rotation no knee articulation no foot articulation and that's kind of where their figure starts to fall apart so he's got less articulation still pretty good amount of articulation but because the feet are so stylized and they gave him that angled foot like that it's it's almost like they wanted you to have him do a walking pose however that really throws him off balance and and i struggle to find him, uh, a, a way to get him to stand up right and usually he's going to have his toe sticking straight up just like i have right there that's kind of the only way that i've managed to get him to get to, uh, to manage to get him standing right there he does come with some accessories now he does come with the with these little origami um butterflies birds uh i don't know uh, origami he comes he comes with origami and he comes with three of them they're in different size and this is one of those things i was telling you about on the show the uh lieutenant and brute would fold these up mystify them and throw them at the turtles and they would kind of look like butterflies but then they would kind of try to shred and cut the turtles up so these these things are kind of like meant to be alive so they kind of just fly around and attack the turtles uh he can't hold them so i guess we'll try to give give him one to hold in his hand so he can do that. Although it's the, the origami ninjas were not the ones holding and throwing these. It was the foot lieutenant and the foot brute. But there it is. You can do that with them if you want. And then finally, he also came with, uh, I think this is a sickle. Anyway, it's got a chain on it. It's got a hand on it. It's got two blades. And of course, you can get him to hold that as well. And uh, not pose very well with it. <laughs> so I do like the design of this. But I'm, I'm kind of unhappy with the pose on the foot there um, because I do want to get a bunch of these and it would be nice if I could pose them differently when I make my display and it looks like they're all pretty much going to have the same stance from the waist down. Uh, that's unfortunate. But look at that. He looks very imposing. Very, very cool. And this time around, I'm not going to cut this one uh, since we I only have the one. Uh, just for comparison, I'm going to bring in the original 1988 foot soldier so you can see what these guys look like together they're almost the same height um i do have 2012 uh, foot soldiers uh actually we have dozens of them because my daughter and i collected a bunch but they're all stored away right now and i am not gonna go digging for them so we're just gonna compare them with the original one for now and here we have one last shot of all the figures together and that is my first review for the rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles figures so far i am really enjoying these figures very very much i really like these a lot i don't know if i'm gonna pick up there's been nine figures released so far i've got these five um i don't know if i'm gonna pick up uh april splinter baron draxum or meat sweats i'm really kind of on the fence uh, I don't know. I don't want to pick up and buy things for the sole purpose of reviewing them. Uh, I said a long time ago I was not going to do that. Uh, and that Splinter figure, I just can't get over that. It's I really don't like that Splinter figure. Baron Draxum and Meat Sweats, I kind of like. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm, I'm picking those up. April, uh, I can take care of Lever. Um, uh, the the sign of the figure itself I, I'm kind of yeah splinter in April uh, I, I'm really not interested in those two figures Baron Jackson and meat sweats I'm on the fence I may possibly pick those two up I'm definitely gonna get more of these foot soldiers or origami ninjas I'm definitely gonna get more of those I'm really looking forward to the vehicles and the place that's really looking forward to that so I think that about covers the first five figures for the rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles what did you think of these figures and what would you like to see me review next let me know by leaving me a comment give me some thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I make a new video please share with your friends if you like what you see and I'll talk to you next time